thoughts on the game? Oh, I thought it was uh, it was a, a, a big win for this team. Also getting back to even, but more importantly, just to see that they bounced back from a Carolina loss that was, you know, I think a wake up call for them that you just can't walk into any game and think just, you know, you're going to be able to take that momentum from the week before you got to, you got to earn it every week. And today I felt that, you know, Chicago had some opportunities. Just You're talking about a team that was really down coming into it. Chicago really doesn't have anything to play for. And yet uh, if you break their back early and they blew some opportunities early, uh, that allowed the Lions to really just take control of the game. And they really dominated. I was really impressed with the defense, impressed with um, the way the, the linebackers played. I don't think there was a lot of threat in the secondary from the Bears receivers, uh, especially once you know you look at Fields, once he was contained. They really had only a one-man show. Uh, they're running game solid, but it, it was just the Lions came ready. They understand what's at, at stake. And uh, it, was just, it was just a great, great um, showing for them. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily, it's an important victory, but uh, they, there's still some work to be done. We're hoping they get in uh, before the end of the day, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Question for Herm Dan. You know, Herm, uh, look at how this team started and how it's kind of resurrected its season, its coaching staff, etc. What would you say, worst case scenario, the Lions don't make the postseason? How big is it psychologically for this team to have such a strong finish? The, the finish, I think, is going to be everything. Right now, if they go out and they win and still miss the playoffs, uh, they win their game next week, it, it won't be a letdown because I think there's enough that's been seen and earned uh, by this, this young team and this just amazing turnaround that happened in the second half of the season that that's going to be enough to elevate them, to make them an attractive team. They're going to be one of the darlings, I think, going into um, – next season a lot of people nationally may disagree with that and think that well it's just the lions and they look at the schedule and look at some of the teams they've they faced but i think they've been impressive against teams whether they're going into the playoffs um their their opponents or not i think this is a team that's taken a lot that they've learned from this past season into next season uh in preparation for it so i look for them to be even stronger and man question for her um um, this this draft class has just gone by. Is this potentially one of the most impressive the Lions have ever had? I mean, everyone contributed, it seemed, today. Pascal seems to be getting a lot better. Houston is just some kind of crazy story at the minute, what he's doing. Three sacks, a forced fumble. It's just it's crazy. Is it one of the best ones they've potentially ever had? And what sort of job does it show that Brad Holmes is doing, being able to find his talent just all over? Well, you're going to have to give a lot of credit where credit is due. I think it starts with picking the players. But then once the players get there, they have to do their part. And then you have to have the coaches that align them with the right scheme, uh, with the right chemistry of other players and teammates when they're out on the field, the right packages. And that's what I've seen really turn around. You look at the offensive play calling. You look at the play sets, the constant rotation of players offensively and defensively uh, that the Lions are having go in and out of rotation. They, they have a system in place. It's not just players getting a, a, a relief because they've been in the game or they're taking too many snaps or it's situational. But I think there's an actual plan and packages that they feel give them the best team to win. And it's not about who gets the most snaps. And that's what I see as a very unselfish team. I see one that understands the ultimate goal in a team sport like this is to win. Uh, so when you, you look at what's happened in the draft, is it one of the best drafts? I think it's one of the, the best uh, drafts in terms of taking players that you you just thought you were just getting a lot of talent and you were going to have to develop it that developed so quickly. Um, they're, they're probably, you know, going to be other drafts that we can look at and say has had stronger players overall. But this is a team that has taken just some players who from uh, from really out of nowhere and really turned them into, you know, starters or backup, solid backup players. And that goes a long way when you're trying to build a, a championship caliber team. The Detroit Lions, they mauled the Chicago Bears. They they is that what you wanted to see after taking that big old L to Carolina? To come out, just really be aggressive and, and just maul them. That's what I wanted to see. I think they're still vulnerable uh, to uh, quarterbacks who have escapability and that have athleticism that can escape and get outside the pocket. You know, if you look at 
uh, you know, they wouldn't be able to play some of the coverages if there's a team that has a mobile quarterback, plus they have targets on the outside that can make plays. I think the defense will still have some struggles uh, until they face teams like that on a regular basis. But you expect it to see them go out and have the strong showing that they had today. Uh, if you if you look at what they had happened to them against Carolina, I, I, I thought it was going to be another one of those. But Justin Fields is only going to have so much gas in his tank uh, after having 100 yards in the first quarter. But I'll say this, guys. You know, when I, when I look at the Lions, the, the, what I'm really optimistic about is that if you look at the NFC North and just focus there, where does this team play when you start thinking about postseason opportunity? Will they be at the top one or two spaces inside of this division for for next two, three, four years? And I think there's a case and an argument that can be made that they will be there. Therefore, they will have opportunities to do something um, with this team and to give it optimism. And uh, as far as what their ability will be to to be a successful uh, team with postseason opportunities to potentially win a championship and win a, a Super Bowl. But um, Minnesota and the Lions, I see right now really sitting at the top of the NFC uh, North right now. Love it. Dan, question. You know, I'll throw one at you, Herm. Forward, Leo, again, trying to look at this team's future. What's the number one obstacle you think it faces that will need to address in the offseason for next year? Well, right now, um, the team, to me, they look they look really solid. Uh, the only vulnerable area I ever still see them at, and I'm going to sound like a broken record quarterback because Jared Goff is playing lights out. And he is right now making a case that you can say he's probably playing like one of the top five quarterbacks easily. Uh, in the NFL right now. And if you're looking at someone who's going to lead your team and you put him around talent like he's had, and he's got the coordinator, he's got some some skilled players, he's got a running game, look at the play action effectiveness. That's great. One running back goes down, you got two more that can come in as of right now that can take over. You get a receiver here, there are one or two receivers go down. You still have enough. I think that's been gained this year by the receiving core. And also, you know, factoring in the tight end, now that there's comfortability, and I think this is a team that is, is is feeling very good about their offensive pieces, and then you can see the rotation defensively. There's still some holes potentially in the secondary, but uh, I think that quarterback becomes what happens, because we've seen all the other positions go down, right? The offensive yeah. line, the defensive line, linebackers, defensive back, receivers, running backs, and they've been able to stay the course. What happens in that position? That is the only thing I see right now as being a potential issue uh, for this team man yeah i agree man if look if jared goff goes down next year oof, that's rough so I, I i agree i think you need a better back i love sudfeld when he's taking the knee arm on the field to win the game <laughs> i'm not sure i'd like him to play a couple games if, if our quarterback goes down and man what do you got um yeah um, in terms of the team itself how big is this win for them today because everyone said last week carolina you know the season's on the line it's kind of the meaningful games in december they got blown out and i know this is not the best chicago team in the world but this is still a meaningful game of football in january that they're playing and they've came out and they've won convincingly is this is this a really big win for the team and you know people will say might i say it's not but if you're looking at this team how they played does this show that sort of the mentality is maturing there, that they're learning to win the high-pressure games? And and then sort of conversely to that, where do you sort of see the team is at now, nearly at the end of the second season? Are they on the threshold of being a playoff team, do you reckon, from what you've seen of them? I think they're a team. There's a, there's a few parts there. Uh, two, two things I see. Uh, was this a defining game or something that made me think a little differently about them and their ability as a team? No, because I don't think the competition – that they faced was one that you would face in the playoffs. I don't think Chicago, you know, with their record, obviously looking at it and seeing the, the lack of talent offensively other than the running game, uh, this wasn't a team that should have given them a lot of uh, problems. And then also the fact the Lions were playing at home, uh, I think was a, an added advantage to playing a team that is, you know, kind of on the lower spectrum and lower tier of the teams in the NFL. Now, having said that, they did what they were supposed to do, and that was win an important game, not have any letdowns, play lights out, play a very solid football game offensively and defensively, and take care of business. Now it gives them an opportunity to go against the Green Bay Packers um, and play a very meaningful game at the end of the season, which 
many of us wouldn't have thought that would have happened if you look at the first six, seven games of the season. So uh, to get back to this point to where that last game of the season actually is going to be meaningful uh, is, is a big deal for, uh, for this team. But they still have to win out. And then, you know, again, tonight have a loss or have at least a loss next week in the event that Seattle wins. But um, this, this, is, this is a big game. Uh, don't want to take anything away from that. But there's, there's going to be some challenges along the way. Uh, and there are no guarantees once they get past this season. they got to start over next year and do it all over again. Even if the Lions don't make the playoffs, do you think this is a, su- a su- successful season? Um, I, I think it's a successful season in that they didn't quit and that they came back and to put themselves in a position uh, and to just come and do it in such a dominant way uh, against teams that many will say they, there's a loss or two that the Lions should have had in this, this last eight-game stretch. Uh, but they, they somehow came out of it and, and with flying colors. And uh, uh, there's nothing to be taken away. I think this is a successful season. For multiple reasons, one for the coaching staff and Dan Campbell, I think solidifying that he is a coach that no matter what you thought of him when he originally was hired, I think you realize that he definitely has the pulse of the team. And this is a team that wants to play with him and for him. The next one is, can they develop talent and get late draft round picks and turn them into to starters and superstars? Yes. Uh, so there's comfortability and there's confidence there. So there's there's now you just say, get as many picks as you can. And then we'll do the rest in developing that talent as long as we get those that have the, the tools that, that can be at this level. Then the third thing is answering the, the question of whether or not Jared Goff was a good pick or a swap with Matthew Stafford. I think now you look at Matthew's first season, Jared Goff's second season. It's almost like you're looking at uh, a rematch coming up in season three <laughs> against these two after one has, has won one battle and one's won the other one, uh, like you see in boxing matches and other competitions. So. I think there's still some some work to be done, but I'm going to go ahead and chalk this up as successful regardless of what happens against Green Bay. And, man, you wanted to say something quick. I don't know. You briefly mentioned Dan there. I mean, he's undergone phenomenal growth. I think as a head coach this year, I feel like he has. Do you feel like he is the guy for Detroit who can lead them to postseason success now? Have you seen the growth from him that would give you confidence to believe that he's the right guy? He, he is, and not just because of the players that he has here and the coaching staff that he has, but those that are watching, being a former player, I know you, you look and see how other players are treated. You look at the enthusiasm and the motivation of other players, uh, both when their seasons are down, but also when they start to come back. And a lot has been documented and, and mentioned in the media about Dan Campbell, and he's gained a lot of respect, not only in the coaching ranks, but amongst the players. So it's going to be an attractive place for, for other players um, potential free free agents uh, to come to and those that are just looking not to just resurrect a career, but those that are looking to potentially go out and play with young talent and win championships. I think they're going to be eyeing Detroit in the upcoming years. Appreciate everybody hanging out. Uh, Herm, last words before we close this thing. Uh, Just, I, I think it's been one heck of a season. I think this is what the fan base has been looking for. I think we, as those that follow the team and cover them, not only on the media side and the social side, but just those that really want to see this team win. And I want to see it from a different reason, and that is as a player, uh, you want to see the, the players and the organization have some success uh, since we had in 1991 and then also going to the playoffs in 2016. So uh, I'm excited about that. Thanks, everybody, for, for joining us on our channel. Continue to, to follow us here. Continue to uh, chime in. I, I, I love when we get on these and have these conversations. So that's my, my little bit uh, to give to it. I just want to say you know, my appreciation to everyone. Perfect.